Let's learn in this video how to secure Kubernetes applications using TLS certificates to enable HTTPS. Web application servers support TLS certificates to enable HTTPS, and in the case of containerized applications, we can embed that TLS certificate within the pod or within the container itself. So when we create the container, we can embed that TLS certificate. But that is not a good practice because that TLS certificate needs to be updated. And I don't want to update my container each time I need to update the TLS certificate. So it should have its own lifecycle management. Another solution in Kubernetes that would be using the Kubernetes secrets objects. So Kubernetes secrets are meant to save secrets like passwords, but also they could be used in order to save those TLS certificates in form of a secret of type TLS. So once that's done, my pod now could be configured in order to retrieve that TLS certificate from the Kubernetes secret and expose it to the container as an environment variable, for example, or as a file from a mounted volume. Let's see how that works in a real world example using here a .NET Core app, a .NET, uh, uh, application. So here I create my deployment. My YAML deployment is just creating a simple image, a container uh, image for uh, ASP.NET. Okay, then I'm exposing for, for number for 443, that is for HTTPS. And then here I'm mounting a volume. And the volume I want to mount here is the volume from which I want to read the TLS certificate. So in this section and within the spec, I create, I mount a volume, and that volume actually will mount the secret the, that contains the TLS secret. And note here, I have already created that TLS uh, secret, and then I converted it into a PFX for my .NET application. For other type of applications, they just might require only the uh, key, the uh, certification key, and the certificate PEM file. So here I have created that secret within the same namespace as my application. Note that. So then I can expose that Kubernetes secret as a volume into my pod. And then I can consume content from that secret as environment variables. So what I am doing here from within the environment variables, here I'm reading values from that volume. So I'm reading from slash secrets slash uh, TLS assert where I have mounted that volume and within that volume I will find my PFX file or my certificate right here because in my secret I have saved that certificate. And then next we configure the ASP.NET Core URLs to configure it to use HTTPS and HTTP and then exposing the port number 443 for HTTPS. So this example is a little bit specific for .NET, uh, but for other type of applications like Java or Node.js, uh, you might have different environment variables that should be exposed and so on. So once this is done, now I can go to check if my pod is really using HTTPS. So here I have created a test. Uh, I have created an Nginx pod within my Kubernetes uh, cluster. And then I'll go inside that pod and use curl-v-k in order to check the uh, certificate used within this application from the app SVC namespace right here. So then I would see here an output about the server certificate, the subject that I have used in my certificate. And that tells me that a TLS certificate is valid for this pod. Let's now go to a demo to check how we can configure a pod to use TLS certificate in a Kubernetes cluster to enable HTTPS. So all the code and all the scripts are available in this GitHub repository where I provide here the readme file with all the uh, details here, the architecture, and also all the commands with the sample outputs that you should get out from this uh, uh, lab. And they also give you the commands in using PowerShell or using bash shell a script. So here to set up the lab environment, I started first by creating an AKS cluster using those attributes. So I create the resource group and then I create the sample AKS cluster. And then from here, I'll go to make sure that I'm connected to that cluster using here the command az aks get credentials to download the cube config file. And then I will go to cube control get nodes. I have created the cluster with two nodes. So I'll get exactly here 
to two nodes. After that here, I'll go to generate the TLS secret. For that, I'm using here the open SSL command line. I'm requesting that uh, to create a certificate and also uh, a key for that. And then I'm specifying here the, for the subject, the CN, which is gonna be the uh, service full name for within my AGS cluster where we specify the name of the service that we will expose and then dot the namespace app and then dot sbc.cluster.local. That will create the RSA private key. Once that's done, I'll go to request actually to create the PFX uh, file out of that. From here, I don't need a password for it. So I'll just go to enter password or export the password. Once that's done, I can see here the TLS certificate key and the search file created right here. Now we'll take that certificate and we'll store it inside a Kubernetes secret file. For that, I'll go to create here the namespace where I will go to deploy my application deployment and also where I will go to create the secret. So I start first by creating that namespace for my application, specify the name of the secret that I will be created. And then I go to create the secret, which is of type generic. And then I specify the file to export, which is the .pfx file that I've created earlier right here and they deploy it into my application namespace. It tells me here the secret was created. So I'll go to verify that using the cube control describe command where I can view here the secret was created uh, successfully within this specific application namespace and they have here the app TLS certificate .pfx. And now let's go to create a Kubernetes sample deployment. So here I'm creating actually a service uh, which will expose the deployment file. And then I'm creating here a deployment object. And in this deployment object here, where I put the attributes for to get the secret and expose it as environment variable into my pod. So what I'm doing here is that I'm exposing or I'm using a volume, I'm mounting a volume to access the secret. So the secret file and content will be exposed inside a volume. Then I mount that volume into my Kubernetes uh, pod right here or into my container and I mount it to the path slash secret slash TLS uh, cert and then I would have my uh, certificate available in that uh, uh, folder. So within the environment variables then I specify the ASP.NET Core Kestrel uh, certificates default path from which it will find within this mounted uh, volume it will find my certificate name.pfx file. And then I specify the HTTPS attributes and the port number to be used with HTTPS, which is going to be 443. So I'll go to generate that YAML right here, and then I go to deploy it. So service and deployment created. Let's make sure the pods were created successfully. So I have the three instances running successfully in my cluster. Now we, may, we want to make sure that service runs successfully. So I'll go here to run, uh, create an Nginx of uh, create an nginx uh, pod, I have already one. So I'll just go to use that nginx to run the command cure dash b dash k because that service is exposed internally within my cluster. So I want to verify within my cluster from a pod deployed that could be deployed in the same namespace or in another namespace. And in both cases, I will use here for HTTPS, I query that full name for the namespace using here the name of the service dot the namespace name dot sbc dot cluster dot local. And then I run that command. And sure enough, this will show me the content or the uh, TLS verification from my uh, pod. So here it did connect it actually to that uh, service, which have a private IP, and then it did have the uh, handshake with for the, and then verified the TLS uh, certificate. And here it tells me it's using TLS v1.3 and it is verifying here the server uh, certificate and it detected that this was a self-signed uh, certificate. 